All right, guys, time for my ugly mug and a quick update. I got everything done in my truck, and I'm gonna put it on the roller in a day or two and see if I can bust the 1,000 tire and not hurt the motor. And I was emptying gas out of my truck and spilled it all down my fucking leg. The hose was all coiled up and fucking attacked me like a spider monkey. And it just dumped gasoline like down into my fucking shoe and my sock and the leg. And if that isn't enough to make you miserable, I don't know what is. So I'm driving to the gas station now because I, I had about E30 in my truck. So I emptied that bitch out till it was blowing foam. And I'm gonna put E85 in, hope my contents way up, and then shoot over to the dyno after I check everything out. So, more to come. This is just the opening sequence. 11, 11 fucking gallons. Slosh this shit in there. Hook up the laptop. See what kind of content I'm at. Maybe tomorrow I'll pick up some more. 33%, let's key cycle a few times. Yeah, it's starting to pump through now. 58. Yeah, it's starting to piss it off. <laughs> 58, that's it. Didn't get enough gasoline out, probably. 59, 58. Okay, this is where it gets all convoluted and I'm probably gonna have questions on this video of stuff I already state. I know right away there's gonna be issues. <laughs> we'll try to cover this as best as we can. So the truck, I got to the dyno, first blast, boop, nailed down 750 on like 13 pounds and not much ignition less than I had before obviously because I took that five degree offset out so I bumped the boost controller made 880 on like 18 safe lots of fuel less ignition so I bumped it again I, I maxed it out basically I made about 21 pounds safe air fuel safe ignition made 955 tire and I'm like oh this is fucking cool I only have to go 50 wheel, here I am. I couldn't get any more out of my boost controller. So, my boost controller, as you guys can see here, if you guys are familiar with external wastegates, this is manifold pressure and I am recirculating manifold pressure on the top. I was out. So, we went to my house, came back here from the dyno, hooked up my regulator, started pressurizing this side, and that's when it all got screwy. I made 918 with adding a little bit more boost. And we're like, what, well, you know, what the hell is that? Check a few things, mess around, make another dyno pull. You know, it makes 900 again. I'm like, huh, what's going on? And then I start seeing weird amounts of boost. I start seeing, like, less boost than I think I would see, or less than I'm asking for. And we start diving into messing around, and I realize this guy has popped out of here and it is like down here or in here it's very close to the turbo which is like red hot at this point from smashing the shit out of it and i'm like oh shit you know the map sensor wire was like down here and i'm like oh shit everything's burned and that's why it's not sh shit's all fucked up no it's fine it's totally fine the wiring is fine but i'll put a picture of this too what happened is is this is like a potted laminate cover here so what happened was it's like putting your headlight in an oven and it melts the glue all this glue melted out and after it started being funny like we were adding a lot of boost and I would check and I would see like eight pounds in the car and it would sound stupid and it was running funny so we hooked up my pressure regulator to the map sensor directly right to this guy 
And after we did that, we heard it hissing and we thought it was the hose I had was too big because I had, I had the compressor regulator here, the boost gauge on it, which is pretty much broken. It was dropped the other day, but we were turning up air and air was coming out and we thought it was the hose was a little bit too big that's on the regulator. No, the air was coming out of here. It delaminated the map sensor. So the map sensor was relieving boost. So there was more boost in the intake and the sensor was just not seeing it because it was blowing out the sides. So we have no fucking clue how much boost it was running. And that generated a lot of issues. So my buddy Ryan actually had CA glue or crazy glue or whatever you want to call it. And we glued this bitch back together and it was fine. Actually, I got it here. I got it right in here. We glued it back, that's why that one looks so nice, because it didn't have the problem. Uh, we glued this guy back together. Can, uh, can you focus, you piece of shit? See all the, whoa, yeah, just throw it on the fucking ground then, once you focus. We glued it and we put a bunch of zip ties around it just because we were fucking scared. But nothing happened with it, and once we hooked up this, it read fine, and we swapped it with that map sensor and it read fine. Say I plugged in this one, turned it up to 20 pounds, and then unplugged it. And I plugged that one in, not changing anything, and it went back to 20 pounds. So both were reading 20 pounds. That turned out okay. So I'm like, well, what the fuck are we doing now? Why can't I make any power? You know, did I hurt my plugs or whatever? And then this is the state we are in now. It seems fine. It seems healthy, but I could not make over 750 tire for the life of me. We came back here and I got, I got wires, I got coils, we changed the coils, wires, I put a fresh set of plugs in, we gapped the plugs down to 16, and we messed with the dwell and we could not make over 750 tire. We had 25 pounds of boost going into the intake. Uh, I moved fuel and ignition all over the place to no avail. And it just started sounding like shit. I mean, it's after I pound it like that for a long time, it does get a little smoky on D cell. And usually it's fine then after I stop beating the living fuck out of it for three hours straight. And I was sure, I'm like, man, I think I, pretty sure I broke some ring lands or something when it was, who knows how much fucking boost uh, I was running because the boost cut doesn't work when the map sensor bleeds your pressure off and isn't accurate. So. I'm thinking I crushed a ring land, but I just did a compression test and it's like 165, 175, 170 within five PSI across the whole fucking board. So static compression is fine, but, and this is what I think also, two, two of my friends, Jordan Frank and Jace, some other people might've said this too. They said, you know, you can have a broken ring land and get a good static compression reading. And I believe that too. It's just when I jam all the cylinder pressure in there, it can't it can't hold it. It's blowing by. I have a leak down tester and I showed it when I did the 48 stuff. So I want to hook up my leak down tester and do leak down on these because the compression is mint. And I have seen it before where the piston looks fine, the bore looks fine. You pull the piston out and then the ring lands fall apart and it's under that high uh low tension, it's fine, but like there's a ceiling on the horsepower now, 750. It won't fucking do it. So it can't hold the pressure. And on D-cell, it is very smoky now. And I'm like, this thing's blown up. I, I come home here, and I start this thing, and I let it warm up to 200 degrees. I temp all the cylinders, 500 degrees on every single port. No giant variation. Uh, change plugs, wires, compression tests, and all that stuff. And it seems, it seems totally fine. So, it's a little bit of a conundrum, but uh, next thing to do is like a leak down, and then the other thing I wanted to do was pull these valve covers off and just check the rockers and push rods and make sure nothing's funny there. It's quiet though, it doesn't make any noise. I, if it had developed any kind of loose pieces in the valve train, you hear it, trust me, I would hear it right away. And that doesn't seem like it's the case, but I have to investigate all of that before I can say yes or no to any of that. Uh, you know, a lot of back and forth. We messed with a lot of stuff. I hope I explained it pretty well. I mean, I think I did. We're just, 
something, it's just not coming out to the tire. And that, it sucks, because I, I made like 950 on the first three pulls. It was like, I'm like, here we go. All I gotta do is get my CO2, I'll run low ignition and put like 24 pounds to it, crank out of over a thousand and fucking go home. And uh, four hours later, I was throwing a fit like a two-year-old at a, at a birthday party. Not my proudest moment, but uh, yeah, I just, I'd had it at that point. <laughs> it got the best of me today. So we'll see if it's broken ring lands. I mean, I got, as you saw up in here, when I swapped the rods, I put the pistons back up there. So if it's, I have four pistons and I already had people say, if I need pistons, they will send me some, which is incredible. So everybody's always stepping up, it's awesome. And you know, everyone wants to see this happen. And the cool thing is, is I have plenty of fuel. So the 5 eighths line, made a huge difference on that. Uh, I was dr a 950 tire, I had a 10-1 air fuel. It was drowning. So, it's nice to know I had that much fuel. But, anyway, I think I covered all the bases. We will see what kind of questions and people stupid ass responses. Uh, some responses were gonna be probably okay. Some responses are gonna be, you guys are gonna be total dipshits. <laughs> Let's face it, uh, some people are going to write questions or say things before they even watch it. You know, uh, I'm, I'm ready for that ahead of time. Obviously, I wouldn't upload these if I didn't want to do some friendly banter or bash the shit out of some people that say stupid shit. Anyway, I mean, another possibility is the trans, but people were asked. I mean, here's the thing. The last 55 dyno pulls in a row on this truck, at, I lift at like 6,200, and it goes like 135 miles an hour. And that number hasn't changed in the last 55 dyno pulls. Uh, I mean, I could look back at the older ones, but if you just take that number, that mile an hour number, that means there's no slip going on. If it can continually hit the high mile an hour, it means that there's traction and the roller is spinning up and everything is working correctly. Not to say that there isn't some strange issue here that, you know, is everything that I half-ass covered, but highly doubt it's trans. Other things like it could be the turbo, but Here's the thing, I've had a lot of turbos go bad on the dyno. Imagine that, hundreds of cars a year. When the turbo starts to go bad, you can't make boost, or it gets really laggy, or both. And you're pushing the shit out of it, and it just never spools up, and... This thing will fucking light switch 25 pounds to the bitter end, and just chooch like a fucking maniac, if you watch those videos. It barks like a fucking Detroit diesel pulling a grain fucking train, so... That seems fine too. Again, it could be bad, like something could, like any one of these fucking things could be bad, but all good compression, good cylinder temps. Uh, what I think is it's just the ringlands are busted down below from the fucking 40 pound hit or whatever it took. And I'll do a leak down and check out, I should just do a leak down before I pull the valve covers off just to fucking waste the time. Anyway, I don't want to make this too long. That's where we stand. I drove it home, uh, you know, it was fine. It runs, it idles, it has good vacuum. It's, I think that they are broken in there and as soon as I get a certain amount of cylinder pressure, about 750 horsepower worth, it can't, it cannot hold anymore. So, cause it was spewing oil and it was starting to vent off everywhere. And then if you drive it nice and you're not puking all that 20 pounds through it, it clears right up, stops blowing by, imagine that. So. We'll do a leak down next and some other stuff, but I wanted to put this at the end of the dyno videos and it's funny, like this fucking motor won't die. She's a trooper and uh, 950 something. I made, I think I made 28 dyno pulls over 750 tire and there she is, drove it home. So that's uh, mind blowing. It's funny, at the end of the day, you get very jaded and I was just super pissed that I couldn't make any more than 750. And obviously for other people, that's their goal is to just make 750. And I'm like, this fucking thing, you know, it's funny, but that's what happens when you, when you do something like this and you expect something out of a project and, and then it doesn't go your way, <laughs> which is pretty much how it goes all the time. Anyway, we will see what my results are from the leak down and some other stuff. If I can't find out what's wrong, I'm going to pull it all apart and pull the pistons out and look at every piston. And for sure, I will use the 4-inch tapered bore piston install tool. And I got Freddy the Fist or wherever it is, and I'll fucking put the 
pistons in with the fist for you guys. I'll just fucking jam those things in there. That'll be hilarious. And, you know, we'll see. And if anything is funny, uh, that guy gave me a set of rods. I can replace rods again. I can put the brand new rods in. But this thing, it doesn't seem like it's a rod issue at all. And I still have this 4.8 over here, which I want to get to one day. But I think I might do a poles. I don't want to blow everybody out with the ceiling lights. I'd like to do a poll on Sloppy and say, what cam? Uh, and I'll put good springs in it. And maybe I'll just whack it with this big ass turbo here and see how it does or uh, people are always curious how does a 4.8 go with a big ass turbo the other part I'm thinking about doing with this 4.8 the thing that sucks is it's a gen 3 4.8 so it's gonna break if I push it too hard part of me wants to see what I could get pistons and rods for but I think 4.8 will be expensive because not a lot of people buy 4.8 stuff so, uh, you know, part of me does want to build a motor for fun, but it's the drop in two grand into it from the start that just is not appealing at all. So, it's just stuff I kick around and don't say anything about and maybe we'll do one day. So, there is the long, retarded, let down, deflating update. I mean, it still made nine and change again and again and again. A bunch of 800, a bunch of 750 all day long. Couldn't stop making 700, but wouldn't make any more than that at the end. So something funny's going on. But she lived another day, and uh, well, you know, we'll see what happens. I'll tear. I don't have any problem ripping it all out and tearing it apart again. I just wish there was a clear answer why it's busted right now. And what's cool, I'm really, I'm looking forward to tearing it apart because I got those badass drip pans and everything for my fucking motor stand. So. That, again, I think I said this fucking four times now. That's it for now. And I will do more updates as I dig into this fucking thing and we'll figure it out.